Good morning. Would you please stand and sing with us? Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we're able to wake up and come here to this place to worship you. And we pray today, Lord, that you would open our hearts and you would open our minds so that we could focus on your message and receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please turn and greet one another.
Good morning. I want to welcome you to Memorial United Methodist. My name is Joe Kate. I'm the pastor here. We're so grateful that you came today. I don't take it for granted that you see red, red on the radar. Not green or dark green, red on the radar. And uh, you came to church anyway. I'm, I'm grateful that you did that. If you look in your bulletin, I want to point out a couple of important notes. When we have anything that's special for the day, anything that we're going to sign up, it's on the inside panel here. And we were planning to bless the prayer garden today from both worship services. We were um, scheduled both to be shorter, to go out to the garden and uh, consecrate it together. We're not going to do that today um, because we want to make sure that it's a pretty day, that we enjoy it, and that that's the memory. But you'll see this is what we're going to do uh, when we go out to the prayer garden in a couple weeks. We'll make that choice. Um, We did plan this service to be shorter. And we did have an amazing rollout today, so I could spend a little bit of extra time. I won't keep you to explain our brand new access system. It rolls out today and turned on today. Those doors that trustees, they go and open all day long throughout our campus. They're open by a computer now. Um, Those of you that have a fob, that have responsibilities, can come up and open a door exactly when your responsibility happens, 30 minutes before that responsibility. You can come and do what you need to do. So I might take um, five minutes and take any questions you may have because I want you to feel comfortable about that. You see the inside of the bulletin, you have our five practices of fruitful congregations. We try our very best to live these out. Uh, As much as we possibly can, we get better every day. You'll see things that you can sign up for um, uh, throughout our church. Uh, So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for shelter from the rain. We thank you for a place where we can come together away from the elements, both in nature, the stresses of our jobs, the concerns on our minds, to a safe place, a quiet place, to reflect on your word. Not to stay here, Lord, not to keep our mind here as we leave, not to set down everything that we've said and done in here as we go out this door to go back to living our lives again, but instead to be inspired this morning, to be strengthened, to be trained, to be made aware of the brokenness that lies in humanity and the joy and the strength that comes from you. Inspire us this morning, Lord, as we pray the prayer your Son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Opening image today is scars. And we have notes, a uh, place where you can take notes in the bulletin. And I realize that's often the place where you tear something out to turn in. We're going to work on that. The opening image today is scars. Our skin is remarkable, durable, and sustainable. It's, it starts over again, but generally, if there's something serious, there's a mark. Let's look at three different images. Let's look at a tree. It's still living. It's still thriving, but you can tell that something happened, whether it was traumatic, uh, whether it was something that uh, helped the tree live, whether it was something that helped the neighborhood. It was going over a sidewalk. The tree is living, but you can tell that there is a mark there that something happened to that tree at some point. Let's look at the next one. This guy has got some serious strength in his skull and in his horns. And if you looked up close, you'd see how many times he's tangled with someone else for whatever reason. He's there. He's moving on. He's thriving, but he's got serious scars from conflict, things that have happened before. Let's look at the last one. Makes my hand hurt just to look at it. Now, that's not a scar, but and they're probably going to fix it, but there's going to be a mark there. Um, I went doing this sermon, I thought, all week long about uh, middle school. I was carelessly carrying a glass jar, a big glass jar for a raffle, and it dropped out of my hands. And I went to try to catch it, and it popped back up and caught me in the hand. And does that not trigger something for you? 
There's no, most times somebody tells some kind of painful story like that, you think, you know what, when I was, or when my child was, whatever it may be, every single one of us can identify with that. Now, these are physical ones. There are other kinds. There's mental ones. There's emotional ones. And those scars limit our ability to do what we're doing if we're not aware of them and working around them. Now, the disciples are dealing with mental and emotional scars. But the most famous scar in this story is Jesus showing them his hands and his feet. Luke chapter 24, verse 36. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. So next phrase, let's eat fish. This is time and time and time again. It ties back to fish for these guys. And the significance of him saying, let me eat something. Let me do something that you do. This is the second time around that this has been significant. Because for someone to think, you are the son of God, you're leading us to where we want to be, there's no way you understand real human pain. There's no, one, there's no way you understand real human emotion and loss. I mean, you're God. You've got to be stronger than that mentally, physically, emotionally. Yet, all throughout the Gospels, they established how he was human. How he felt serious sadness and brokenness when he lost his friend John the Baptist. And now again, after his resurrection... They're asking a similar question. Well, it's not real, right? You're not, you're not like real. I can touch you, right? And he says, yeah, let's eat fish. Now, these boys are a long way from home in a busy, busy town. I've asked you this because we've been in Jerusalem for um, a couple months now. You'd love being in Atlanta without GPS, right? If Atlanta were having a big festival, you'd love to be in Atlanta, wouldn't you? Just kind of driving around. That's one of those relationship strengthening exercises where the passenger, your loved one, your dear friend, your partner of over 47 years just kind of screams at you that you missed the exit or that you're, or this is a one-way street. And you bell back, you know what, I don't really need any help over here. You know, I'm operating the motor vehicle, whatever it may be. These guys are a long way from home. And, of course, everything is heightened. Every emotion is heightened. And of course, they've got scars, as we've already described. But he's telling them, let's do something that we have done. Let's get back to doing something that we have done. This is what um, the NCAA tournament just ended. Um, when there's six minutes to go or six seconds to go, and a team is down, a coach draws them over and says, let's remember what we do. Let's remember how much we've practiced. Let's remember what we believe. Let's remember that we're all family. He says, let's eat fish. They've never fully understood the story as they walked along beside him. They didn't have the um, library of scriptural knowledge to draw on when following him around. They worked hard. They probably weren't in church very often. And as they followed him around, they were trying to put pieces of the puzzle together. And I can identify with that a little bit. A number of my minister friends went to Wofford College, where they majored in religion, where they learned to break down the entire Bible before they ever walked into seminary. And when they walked into seminary, they were working on a whole other level. I went to the Citadel. I studied history. There was no religion major. And I wouldn't say I was an A student in church in my first 18 years. And so I was trying to catch up as professors were talking about concepts that were beyond undergraduate 
degrees. These guys are a long way from home. They've never fully understood the story. They're wondering exactly what to do. So he says, let's eat fish. Jesus brings a familiar image back home to them. And what's familiar about fish to them? A miraculous catch. They were fishing all night. Not like us having fun fishing all night. For their job. They were fishing all night. They caught nothing. A carpenter from Nazareth came to the shoreline and said, hey, put it out on the other side. And they said, this guy over here, tell me to put the net in again. Miraculous catch. Jesus says to them, we're going to fish for people. Post-resurrection, trying to put the puzzle together. He says, let's eat fish. And I emphasized this last week. I'm going to emphasize it again as your next phrase. Peace be with you. We, we have got to remember that. It's so hard to live it out when we're not getting that peace back. When there's not a response back to us with peace. I'm not talking about being taken advantage of. I'm not talking about staying in an abusive relationship. I'm talking about the world giving you uh, uh, selfishness, anger, uh, whatever it may be, and you giving back peace. Because of a well of belief that you are drawing from that that's what Christ did for me. Peace be with you, is what he says. Meals offering peace and peace offering meals. And meals offering peace and peace offering meals. How many times do you think they did that? How many times do you think it took to sink in? How many times do you think Jesus was willing to do it in order for it to sink in? As many times as it takes. Now, um, we, have a, uh, we have nine Wednesday dinners a year. We have a consecration dinner. We have uh, ice cream social. Uh, there's got to be two more that we do where we gather together where all of you could. So there's 365 days. There's not many times that we gather like that. But you gather outside this space with people all the time eating a meal. And if you were to remember, sharing a meal, peace be with you, peace be with you, let's share a meal. That pattern that Jesus followed with them over and over and over again. Verse 44. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Now, <laughs> there's two things there that um, generally cause the hair on our neck to stand up, uh, anxiety to stand up. When someone says, yeah, you remember when I told you? And were you listening? 50-50? Is it 50-50? Is it, is it that high? Is it 80-20? Whatever. Is it 20-80? The likelihood that you have been listening. The other one is the teacher five minutes in the class saying, okay, let's start talking about the reading that we had last night. Did everyone do the reading? Did everyone do their homework? I wouldn't say I was an A student in the academic life, and there were occasions when my strategy was to look so hard at my notes, like, don't even call on me. I'm so into this biochemistry. You shouldn't even call on me to whether I did the homework or read the book. You shouldn't even do it. You remember what I said? You remember what was written in Scripture? You can see those guys around that table going, nah, nah, a little, little bit no. A little bit yes, a little bit no. And it says, and then... He explained the scriptures to them, which is your next phrase, and it's a question. Will we listen to people with scars? Or do we want to listen to people that are beautiful? People that always project strength. People that offer perfection. So this is what many leaders project anyway. Because they figure... 
the only way that someone will listen to me, follow me, whatever it may be, is to show you that I'm perfect, that I'm strong, that I'm beautiful. And in a way, they're right. Those are the classic ways. If we're not fighting, if we're not paying attention, we're paying attention to the strongest one, to the beautiful one, to the one that feels like their life is completely put together and perfect. If they had that mindset, who would they follow in that moment? Caesar. Pontius Pilate is the local one like that. Total power, lots of money, lots of authority, completely in charge. If, if Pontius Pilate had a Twitter account and Pontius Pilate threw things out there and Jesus had a Twitter account and he threw things out there, which one would get more follows? So that's the question we've got to ask. Do we want the weak one that is perceived that way? Do we want the strong one that's perceived that way? Jesus downplayed power. Jesus became vulnerable. He shows them scars that powerful humans gave him. He showed them scars that people who figured they were completely in control gave him. He showed them scars people who thought that they were going to end this movement entirely gave him. Yet here he is today. Verse 46. He said to them, this is what, what, what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. To how many nations? If we were to say God bless, how many nations would fall under that category? He says, where does it start from? Jerusalem. Where you are this day, you men, gathered in a room with the doors locked, it's going to start with you. Your last phrase. Forgiveness of sins must be preached. That's what he said. Now, we're inclined to either, um, humans don't really have like a dimmer switch like in your um, dining room where you can change the um, lighting 50 different ways. We more have one of those switches like um, Dr. Frankenstein, like, wow, you know, it's either here or here. We change back and forth dramatically. We either emphasize sin, 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 sin. Or we emphasize forgiven, 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 forgiven. That's it. And we go one or the other. And neither is complete without the other. He says, I want you to go out and help people understand have they fallen short? Many of them because they didn't read the book. Many of them because they weren't paying attention. An ocean of them because they didn't read the book or pay attention. And their default is to just look out for what they are and watch people who are strong. He says the forgiveness of sins must be preached and it's going to start with you. What does that mean for us? That means it starts with us. People who are gathered inside doors to hear about a person with scars who turns around immediately and places the responsibility in our hands. It's not one we're watching do something amazing. It's one who's calling us to do something amazing. Calling people with scars to do something amazing. People with physical ones people with emotional ones people with mental ones are called to follow him and preach the forgiveness of sins from people with scars to people with scars see a lot of those people with scars are unwilling to listen to you because of the event that caused the scar they're not hearing it they're not hearing anything about church. They're not hearing anything about Jesus. They might not hear anything from you for whatever reason. 
And what you need to remember is Jesus, who walked with these guys from 18 to 36 months, explaining everything to them. They were still confused. They still wondered. They still fled. They still said, I don't know if I'm with him when he was going by. He still went back to them and said, the forgiveness of sins must be preached. Let me help you understand. So, if you're thinking, wait now, you calling me to do it and I don't know the book as well and I don't know how to, exactly how to say it, you can go right back to that opening part. Offering peace with a meal, having a meal and offering peace over and over and over again until you transition someone's life in Jesus' name because he has changed yours. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'll stand as you're able for our modern affirmation. This is a way that we um, show our faith in this worship service. You're welcome to join us. You're welcome to simply listen. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of God fulfilled. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, reminding us always of the truth of Christ, our inspiration and strength in times of joy and sorrow. We believe our faith should be apparent in our words of love and acts of service, that the kingdom of God may be a present reality here on earth. You may be seated. It's now time for our offering. You can see in the extravagant generosity section if you want to give online. You can see in text to give. You can see how to do that. Um, as the plate goes by, you can certainly hand it to the next person. If you're a guest today, if um, you're new to our church, we certainly don't expect you to give. You can, um, but you can rely on the generosity of our folks.
Would you please stand and sing this last one with us? or get in the car if you're going to go. Um, if you will leave your bulletin behind, if you didn't write in it, we'll save that liturgy for a future date when we bless the prayer garden. Um, watch our email and the website this afternoon as to whether we have Sunday night programming. We'll send an email and we'll also post it on the very front of the website. If you have any trouble with the access system, if you'll let us know. And if you're a leader who comes here on days other than Sunday morning, you'll stay behind so I can give you yours and we can test it out. Go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the power, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you all. And so
great week.